read me romance read read me romance read me romance read read me romance you could take a look in a book that's fine or you could sit back relax and unwind and read me romance read read me romance welcome back to the second half of sweet enough to eat you're here with alexa riley also known as melissa and or mel and leah <laughs> hey i almost was like Bah, like Sorali. I don't know why I wanted to like yell at you. <laughs> okay. Can I tell you that? Okay. So you texted me earlier today and you said, so are you crazy? Yeah. And I was like, did I tell you the story about what happened to me the other day? And I was like, no, because I wrote it down to tell you on the podcast. So this is how crazy I am. Okay. So we get back from our trip. And of course, there's like 10 pounds of, well, 10 million pounds of laundry. I knew you were going to say laundry. I know. So I'm like going through and like, you know, I get the kids done first because theirs is just the easiest. And then I start to do mine and my husband's. And as I'm doing it, a credit card falls out of his shorts. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what the fuck? And I look and it's a Wells Fargo card. And I was like, we don't bank with Wells Fargo. What the fuck is this? I was like, he's hiding money. He's hiding money from me. He's trying to get out. He's got another family he's feeding. Like <laughs> That's not crazy. My mind would do the same thing. Jerk up the card, go and confront him, and I'm like, what the fuck is this? Who is she? He was like, <laughs> it says the city of Albemarle corporate card right there. <laughs> it's his business card. <laughs> it's his business corporate card for his work job. <laughs> um, an oh, you should leave it in your pocket. I know. I'm not going to wash it. What are you thinking? <laughs> like, don't get, like, get double mad. Double down on the anger because you're crazy. That's yeah. exactly how you live a happy marriage. <laughs> Oh my god! Like, why am I like this? I don't know. I don't mind just go there. And sometimes I wonder if I kind of want to fight sometimes. <laughs> what do you mean? I like, wonder. I don't know. Like, is, is, this be is it because we write like this crazy over the top shit that we're always suspect? After a fight is always really fun. Mm -hmm. You're all like lovey dovey, and it's super yeah. sweet. Mm -hmm. and but I never fight because it's it takes a lot. So when we fight, it's a fight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel like that. Um, you know, we were we were doing something, and I I can't even tell you what we were arguing about because it's that unimportant. Mm -hmm. But I remember I didn't want to fight with him because I was like, it's just going to be a fight. And he's like, just what's wrong with you? And I was like, it's not important. I don't want to fight with you. And he's like. The day we stop fighting is the problem. Yeah. And I was like, all right, let's do this shit. <laughs> Challenge accepted. <laughs> Let me show you how much I love you. <laughs> but sometimes it's hard. Like, oh, we were laying there like a few weeks ago and I was like, oh, I scheduled the cleaners to come such and such. And mm -hmm. he was like, <sighs> he's like, now I need to do this and do that. And I was like, fine, whatever. And I wouldn't cancel that. It really was a whatever to me. You know what I yeah, mean? I was, yeah. But he's like, you what? And then he got super mad at me for canceling because then they don't believe, he did not believe me that I really didn't care. <laughs> I was like, I swear, it's not that big of a deal. And if it's ruffling your feathers, just cancel it. Yeah. Yeah. Then we're fighting about fighting about this <laughs> oh my god oh let's just kill them all <laughs> how did it go with uh your house is everything finished since the fire like is it all back to normal now yeah um except my refrigerator that's the last thing that's coming they still don't have you still don't have a refrigerator well i have my original one it's just okay. got welted on the side or whatever so it's fine <laughs> but it's just fire damage no big deal but everything else is good did you I get everything clean now we have it though like we have our microwave back but i keep using the tiny one on the counter <laughs> i was gonna ask did you get rid of like your dumpster and all that stuff like are you guys finished with all that yeah oh, everything's that so gone good. and like we even peyton redid his room isabel redid her room mm -hmm. so That's it's awesome. nice 
<laughs> they needed kind of a facelift because they're getting older. Yeah. It's been a while since she moved in, too. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, the, we talked about uh, several times we've talked about my house and, like, the renovation stuff and how long they took. So, you know, we'll be in, it's three and a half years we've been in the house. And we pretty much don't have a driveway. And it's been that way since we moved in. But the outside of the house was always the thing we said we do last. And it's one of those things, too. If you've ever done a big home renovation, they cost a ton of money. And once you drain out all that money, it's really hard to let go of money again. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's taken us, you know, we've been here. We've been in this house almost two years since we finished renovations. So, since then, we've been saving up for the past two years to do this outside project. Concrete and is expensive. Concrete is so fucking expensive. And it's like, if you're going to get a little pad done, you might as well get your whole fucking yard done. Because it's like, at that point, you're just like, well, I'm out 50 grand. Like, just go ahead and do the whole fuck. Not that much, but you know what I mean. But um, so the driveway that was here, it was like two strips of concrete that you sort of put your wheels on and drive up. And there's like grass in the middle. I know exactly what you're talking about. And it's yeah. like all, but this is like all broken up. Pieces of concrete are just missing. Like who came and dug out part of this driveway and went off with it? <laughs> like that's what I want to know. So like since we've lived here, I just park in like a big mud puddle and I just get out and walk around in a mud puddle and it's just a fucking pain in the ass. But I try not to complain because we've been saving money to do it and it's just like we'll get to it eventually and so last year we got we got three different contractors to come price it out for us last year because we want to get you know the best bang for our buck and one guy gave us the highest price and said I can be here in two weeks and one guy gave us a pretty middle of the road and the other guy gave us the lowest price and he's like I'm two months out and we're like well, we'll take the two months guy we waited two years why not yeah this was in March of 2020. <laughs> this guy did still not fucking show up. This still is not fucking showing up. So that's funny. I know. So we finally had to get another guy to come out and uh, in November and give us. An we had to get somebody totally different to come give us a different quote. He was pretty reasonably priced. That he was a couple months out. But then it got too cold. You can't pour concrete yeah. at a certain temperature. So we had to wait through the winter. So it's been a year that we've been trying to get a fucking driveway. They came today and they started digging in the backyard. So like, it's so exciting <laughs> that it's finally getting done. I we think I told you when you were like, oh, I know it's just a driveway. I was like, no, it's like a, it's like when you do your eyebrows. <laughs> it really it's nice. is. Yeah. It's, it's like a small touch, but it's so important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really is. Cause it's like, I know people drive by our house and they're like, God, that's a sh real shithole. That house. But the inside's really nice. Like, like we're probably going to get robbed once we do our driveway. <laughs> Cause you're like, hey, maybe they got some stuff in there. <laughs> Cause from the outside, it's very unassuming. You know, because last year during quarantine, we our neighbors had like a big gator. And I was like, hey, can we pull up all these shrubs in the front of our house? It was like I was going stir crazy and looking for something to do. And we hooked the gator up to all these shrubs that lined our house. They were holly bushes. Somebody had planted thorny bushes in the entrance of my house. So you had to walk like, through oh, the. Oh, an entry like it wasn't below a window or something. It was, but the walkway was right next to the house. Like the holly bushes were so overgrown. When you walked on the little path up to my yeah. door, you would get hit with holly bushes. Like we would have scratches all over us. We're like, whose idea was this? So we like pulled them all up. And so the beds have just been mud <laughs> like since then because we didn't have a plan to replace them until we got the driveway done. So we were like, oh, we'll just wait. And a year later, we're like, well, we're still waiting. So, you know, our, our house just looks like a fucking mess out front. But, you know, it, it's just, it's been a long process. But I can't believe it. They came today and they have to grade out and level the backyard and stuff. Um, and then they said they're going to, they gonna, they're going to inspect, inspect it on Wednesday. And then they're going to pour the concrete. Like, it's going to happen. They say it's going to happen. I'll believe it when I see it. But I can't wait to see it. Oh, my God. Let it's me ask so you, awesome. you've never left your cat before, have you? No, no, we hadn't left him for a long time like that. How did that go? Oh, did man. he stay home? 
He did. He stayed home, but we have a friend named Emily that lives in town here. She's a good friend of ours, and she's a cat lady. Mm -hmm. She's got a couple of cats on her own, and she freaking loves cats. So she came over and stayed a couple nights and then came over every day, like, you know, to play with him and make sure his food and water were okay. Um, we had left him overnight once. Uh, we went to see my in-laws. Mm-hmm. And so we came back the next day and when we came home, he puffed up huge and started hissing at us. Oh, and it was like, trouble. <gasps> Oh yeah. It was like the house was quiet and he was at peace and we came in and it was loud as fuck. And he's like, you got to get out. <laughs> I don't like this at all. So he was pissed the last time we left him. So I was actually really nervous about him being mad that we were gone. Mm-hmm. And so um, I told Kevin, I said, why don't you go in first? Cause the cat loves him. I said, why don't you go in first in the house and make sure like he's calm and he's happy. And, you know, before we all come in and make a bunch of noise. So he goes in and the cat just like runs to him and like jumps in his arms and just like, it's, and then he starts talking. He's like, meow, 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 meow. It's like, he's telling them everything that happened while we were gone. It was the cutest thing That's ever. Adorable. Oh my God. I loved it. And so Kevin was like, yeah, he's okay. Everybody come in. And like, he's just purring so loud and we're all loving him. And he's rolling on his back. And, his back. <laughs> and then he's just like, it's like he's energized. It's like he's we've given yeah. him a shot of heroin. He's like all over the house, like spastic, like climbing up on stuff, just meow, 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 like talking to us the whole time. It's like it's so funny. It's like he was really trying to speak to us mm-hmm. to like communicate somehow. But um, Emily came over. She gave him like a ton of treats and stuff like that. So I think he was OK. But how does, it, how does yours do? Because that was uh, the first time you've been away from him. Yeah, he seemed fine when I got back, but. You know, peanut butter is our outside cat. He goes yeah. down a lot. Yeah. And he's, him and Rob fight a lot. <laughs> they fight? They, <laughs> what, they what's, fight. Their, what's their discussion and, like? <laughs> like? Peanut butter will come inside. He'll meow super. He doesn't meow like meow, meow. He like screams his meow. Mm-hmm. So you hear him. So you oh open the door to let him in. And then he'll stand on the counter and meow till you come feed him. And if he, you don't come feed him, he will. He'll come up the stairs and sit behind my, sit beside my bed and go meow, 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 meow. <laughs> Until but you get up and feed him. Too, but he meows when he wants to go outside, mm-hmm. and if he wants to go outside, but we can't let him go outside. Uh-huh. So um, he goes to the door and they chirp. They don't meow. Uh-huh. And he chirps like, "Are you open it?" <laughs> I feel so bad, but Aww. we had this screen open one day for some reason, uh, and I couldn't find him. He pushed through the screen. Oh my god! Did he like break it? Yeah, he broke it. Oh my god! How much does this cat fucking weigh? What kind of muscle tone are we working with here? He's gotten really big, really, really big. But he pushed through. But he was just under the deck. But it scared me. But this is what Rob and the cat have been fighting about lately. Mm -hmm. So the other day I was sitting in bed, messing with something on my computer, and Peter Butter jumps up. Actually, when I came back from Celia's, I found every night when they come to bed, I give them treats. That's when they come upstairs for me at the end of the Mm -hmm. night. Um, I found the treat thing on the floor next to my bed, and it was empty. And I'm like, oh, they went through all of those. So I picked it up, put it away, got a new one. Mm-hmm. And that night I'm sitting at my table or whatever on my bed, and Peanut Butter gets up, and I think he wants some pets. But he goes mm-hmm. behind me, and I'm not even paying attention. Mm-hmm. And he gets up on the table and knocks the treats off. The <sighs> lid flies. And it's not a small treat thing. It's a big container. Yeah, right? yeah. It Flies everywhere. He jumps on the ground and is like attacking it like a little fucker. He knows what to do. But it wasn't <laughs> from the end of it. Then I wake up at like four in the morning and Rob's like, knock it off. Stop it. He kept, we put it on a high table away that we thought he couldn't jump on. Yeah. And he kept jumping up there. Holy shit. Yeah. So he ended up having to put it like over on a picture high up. Oh my God. Because he's that go obsessed. Yeah, he's just like, whack. And they're Jesus. fighting about it. Because <laughs> Rob's like, stop it. You're not getting up there. He's like, the treats because the, the cat's going to listen, you know. Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. Because you can definitely just speak logically with one of them. <laughs> 
but I swear they bicker all the time. I'm like, you guys are always bickering. Hmm. Um, I had something that uh, I sort of, I kind of half paid attention to um, the other day. I had, I, there's an author that I follow on Instagram. There was apparently like a bunch of drama that happened the other day. I don't know. I missed all of it. And I just caught like the tail end. But there was an author the other day that posted up that um, she had published on Amazon and on her, like the day her book went live, that something happened and it said she only sold like eight copies or something like that when she was like, it was release day. It had a ton of pre-orders, but all the pre-orders got canceled. And she's like, you know, I've been on the phone with people all day, like trying to figure out what happened, like why everybody's money got refunded. And she said, you know, she never got any answers on it. And I just feel, I felt really bad for her. And like I messaged her, I was like, hey, I know like, you know how this feels. Like it really sucks. And we just talked for a while and she's like, you know, I think this is just the push I need to publish my books wide because she's like, you know, this isn't the first issue I've had with Amazon and haven't been able to get it resolved. And um, she was like, you know, I'm okay with making less money going to other other avenues she was like because i want 100 percent of my money she's like i feel like i'm not getting that on yeah. amazon anymore and truth be told this is not the first author that i've heard this say this like in the past couple of months so i don't know if there's like you know a what's happening yeah i don't know it's like uh one of the things i wondered for a long time was as a reader the kindle unlimited program is fucking awesome as a business model, I don't know how the hell they're profitable. I don't, I, don't either. I don't understand how this is a profitable business because as we romance readers know, we cannot get enough. We can and read 10 of those small books in a week. Exactly. And it's like, and they're paying out well more than what they would cost them to just buy this book directly one time, you know? Mm -hmm. So I just don't. I don't understand like has a is a business model how this is sustainable and if this is why maybe some authors find that they have issues if they're like wedging them out or if they're you know sort of giving them no alternative but to pull their books I don't know like I, I don't know like what's your opinion on this like the I don't know I I understand that more than anybody that Amazon won't really ever answer your question and if they do, it's a very loose, open question that's not fully answered. Yeah, there's no definitive answer. You'll so never get one. Even if they them. mess something up, they're not going to tell you. Mm -hmm. They're just going to this. Somebody will reach back to you and they'll just probably call her back or email her back. Like, it's up. It's fine now. Yep, that's exactly it. And even when she questioned them about, she was like, well, the page is read as this, but the the algorithm is this. And she was like, it's not matching up. And she was like, so then they adjusted my page reads to lower. So it matched what their numbers were. You know, she was like, the more questions I asked, the more glitches I got. She was like, then all of a sudden, when you search my name, that all this like Christian romance came up. Oh, and she was like, she said, it was just like, they were absolutely fucking with me. And I felt, I felt so horrible for her because I truly believe that Amazon has a department that their sole job is to run you in circles. And I know that that sounds crazy, that that sounds ludicrous to make that sort of argument, yeah. but it's, it's my experience. And I, with them. Feel like, I feel like they do that just to the KU people. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, you know, that, and you know, again, you know, like we've, we talked about in the past, we were romance readers and, and that kind of thing. But if you're an author and you're listening, or if you're just a reader and you're in this community, like you're in the bloggers, or if you're in the bookstagram community or whatever, you pay attention to stuff like this. So I just think it's something important to, t to discuss. When I see that it continues to be an issue, it's not an isolated incident anymore. You know, like this is, I saw two different authors this happened to in the past, I'd say three weeks, mm -hmm. where I, the authors that I follow, and I, and I don't follow a ton of authors, you know, like the the ones that I've had seen that have talked about, like the issues with the glitches, the payments not being the right amount for the pages read, like like that kind of thing. It makes me wonder, like, what else is going on? You know, yeah. and Amazon is like 
such a huge industry, but they're also so secretive. It's not about, like you can audit them. No, you just have to trust what they tell you. And that's, that's exactly it. it. And then if you do like her and you push back and you ask questions and all of a sudden your page reads go down, your name's not searchable, your reviews disappear, or it's like you get these ghost one star reviews. You know, we talked about that the other yeah. day. I've seen like, those. I because I've seen them before because they irritate me because I mm -hmm. actually read reviews. Yeah. So I'll read the best one and then I'll read the worst one because sometimes the worst one's like too much sex. Yep. And mm -hmm. I said that there it's was the three, love. Yeah, yeah. They said that there were three bad reviews, mm -hmm. but when I clicked to see them, it wouldn't show me them. Yeah. It was like and nothing. It was weird. That's what she said, too. She said another issue was when she pushed it, it was like the phantom one-star reviews started popping up. And she's like, I have no problems with one-star review. I'll take it if that's what that they feel like I deserve. She's like, reviews aren't my business. She was like, but it is my business when you when there, there's not a real review for it. You're just giving me a one-star because I'm causing problems. I just, everybody uses Kindle because it's so easy. I don't mm -hmm. think, a lot of people don't realize how easy it is to use, like Apple users. Yeah, yeah. You if you have an iPhone. You have yeah. an iPhone. It's quicker to go on the i you open the iBooks and bam yeah. it's there and it is just like a Kindle. Yeah. Yeah, it's I, I like iBooks a lot better because I mean I hadn't I had used it before um before our books were taken off Amazon. Like I had used it in the past for one of my mystery of authors because she would publish first on iBooks. And so I would always download iBooks because that I, I would like even if it was 12 hours, I was still like I want it now, you know? Yeah. So I always went on there and read hers and it was, it was, it was a super easy change to make for if you're a Kindle reader, especially if you read on your phone. Anything now, I you, can buy from Apple, I do. Yeah. I mean, if you can, like, if it's like a Kindle reading device, I mean, you know, we've said before, like you can download those digital files off of our website or like from Eden Books, you know, and you're supporting, you're supporting a small woman owned business. Like that's, that's your alternative. And it's not necessarily a bad one. I don't think, mm -hmm. I mean, if you've got a company that's like ripping off a friend of mine, like I'm not going to suggest them for you to go spend your money there. I'm going to be like, go check out Eden's. It's the same fucking thing. Yeah. And they're not ripping off my friend, you know? Yeah. So I don't know. It's just one of those things. Like I kept seeing it and I thought like, we should have a discussion on this because if I'm seeing it, I know people, other people have got to be seeing it. So Definitely. I just, I, you know, and I try to remind myself too that, you know, Kindles haven't been around that long. Amazon hasn't been, you know, the publishing giant it is now. It hasn't been this way forever. And eventually it won't be the thing, you know, there'll be something new and it's hard. Everything to, changes. Yeah. It's hard to fathom that. But I think one of the things that we've learned as authors is that you have to change when the tides, you know, with the tides, you have to, you have to move with technology. Yeah. You have to find a new way to promote yourself and, and to publish, especially with romance because it's so rapid fire. You know, if it's a different genre, it's a little slower and you plan yeah. it out differently. But, you know, with self-publishing romance authors, it's just, it's all about like where, what's your best channel you know, yeah. and that changes very quickly. So anyways, I just want to bring that forward today in the discussion room. <laughs> so let's, uh, we're actually going over, but um, what are we doing? Sweet enough to eat. I forgot what book we had. We're bringing you the second half of Sweet Enough to Eat. And like I talked about last week, you can go ahead and get the ebook on that now if you want to, um, or you can get the, um, the other one, the Wedding Cake Crashers that goes with it. Um, they're both just cute as shit. I mean, yeah. just adorable. And super sweet. Yeah. And then tomorrow you can get a brand new release from us. It is called Hometown Hero. It's the second book in the Pink Springs series, but you could, you never have to read our books in order. All of them are standalone. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it makes more sense if you read book one, but you really don't have to. So make sure you grab that brand new one from us tomorrow. And... We'll see you after. All right. See you on the other side. Bye. Chapter three. Nikki. Oh, God. I put my hands over my face. I still can't believe this is happening. 
Of course. I finally find the one, and now his cock is stuck inside of me. He puts his phone away after calling his cousin to come help us, and I have no idea how his cousin is going to do that. We're freaking stuck together, and to make matters worse, I want to come again. There has to be something wrong with me. This is what I get for not being patient and waiting until we got to a bed or something. Although it wouldn't matter because we'd still be stuck. I've waited years for this moment, and now that I've found him, it looks like we might be permanently stuck together. With the way he's making my body go off, it doesn't sound so bad. But we can't stay this way, no matter how good it feels. I'll make this right, sassy pants. I narrow my eyes on him because he keeps calling me that. I try and play it off like I don't like it, but my traitorous vagina clenches and gives me away. He smirks, and one perfect dimple shows, making it hard to stay mad at him. He kisses the glare right off my face, and I melt into him, forgetting for a moment that we're connected until a knock sounds at the door. Dean gives me a look that says, he's sorry, but all I can think is, at least there was a blanket nearby that he was able to grab. Come in, Dean says, and all teasing is gone from his voice. In steps a man I haven't seen before, but from his suit, I can tell he must have been at the wedding too. He looks shocked, and I'm not a prude, per se, but this is embarrassing. I lost my virginity not even moments ago. What the? His words trail off because he doesn't know what to say, but I notice he keeps his eyes averted from me. Thank God. Okay, so let's just get the awkwardness out of the way. Dean says, I know he's trying to make light of the situation, but his tone is still tense. I can feel it in the hard lines of his body. Nikki, this is my cousin Hank. He nods towards his cousin. Hank, this is my girl Nikki. Oh, don't you even think about it. I'm most certainly not your girl. I glare at him. Right now, I have no idea what we are, but this is not the time or place to be making claims. Still, I can't stop the butterflies in my stomach from dancing around. Listen, cousin, I appreciate the call, but this is not my scene. Hank says as he holds up his hands and takes a step back. Oh my God, he thinks Dean called him for a threesome. Why would his cousin even think that if Dean was a virgin? Oh God, was he lying to me? Really, Hank? You think I called you for a three-way? Dean yells. Anger flashes in his eyes a moment before he gets back in control. He wasn't lying to me. Explain to me what the hell is going on, Hank says, trying to look anywhere but at the two of us. So, when I was in college, I lost a bet, Dean starts to say. Faster, Hank demands, clearly as uncomfortable about this as we are. My cock piercing is stuck somewhere inside her and I can't get it out. Hank's eyes snap to Dean and I pull the blanket over my face because I don't know if I want to laugh or cry right now. Wait, I don't think I heard you correctly, Hank says through a choked laugh. Why won't the ground open up and swallow me? I mutter under the blanket. Look, I can't very well call 911 to the wedding and have Rich and Alicia's day ruined. You have to help us get to the hospital. Reality starts to set in, and Dean's right. We're going to have to go to the hospital. Dean, what in the actual fuck? Now Hank sounds pissed too, and I don't blame him. Hank, if I had another option, I'd take it. But I'm pretty sure the barbell is stuck on something inside her. It's my IUD, I answer from my hiding place under the blanket. I had it put in about a year ago, and I had no idea this could happen. I do not remember reading about this on the pamphlet. Wait, you're on birth control? Yeah, that's not going to work for me, sassy pants. I pull the blanket off my head. 
He sounds more pissed about my IUD than anything. Stop calling me that. I give him my best glare that sends most people running. Not Dean. The look has no power over him and he isn't backing down. Damn it. I love that about him too. All I heard was that you're okay with getting that thing taken out. My eyes almost pop out of my head. I can't believe he said that. If you would just stop being hard, it would go down and you could pull out. I say through clenched teeth. And how in the fuck do you think that's going to happen? I'm inside this warm, soft pussy that I just popped the cherry out of, and then you came all over me. Dean! Hank and I both shout at the same time. What? He shrugs, almost proud. The only way I'm getting soft is by coming inside you, and I can't move. I clench around his cock, and my body loves that idea. When Hank speaks, I remember we aren't alone. How I forgot, I'll never freaking know. Dean has some weird power over my body. All right. Hank pinches the bridge of his nose. What I'm hearing is that you either need to get off, or I need to get you out of here and to the hospital. Get off, Dean shouts. Hospital! I shout at the same time. I need to get away from Dean and everyone else for a moment. I can't have sex while someone waits to make sure it all worked out okay. Hank takes out his phone and makes a call. All right, it looks like we're taking door number two. Dean, you're going to have to pick her up and carry her out to the car. I have no idea what this is going to do, but if it hurts, let's stop and call the professionals, okay? Deal. I agree quickly, and Dean only nods. Hank turns around while we try and get ourselves up, and I can't help the small moans that come from me. Stop that, I whisper yell at Dean. I'm trying real hard, sassy pants. He fights his own groans as pleasure rocks through me. It's not so bad. Just let me finish and we can go back to my place. There's teasing to his words, but I don't know if he's joking to make me laugh or if he's serious. Maybe a mix of both. Dean. Hank warns before I actually agree to the idea. He wants to get this over with as fast as I do. Dean lets out a few curse words until he finally gets us positioned right so I have the blanket over both of us still. Dean isn't so lucky, and the blanket is the best I can do. Hold that blanket tight, Nikki, Hank says as he opens the storage room door for us. I don't want to see Dean's ass. When we finally get into the car without anyone seeing us, it's far from over. It's almost an hour to the hospital, and although Dean tries to make light of things, each minute, I grow more and more tense. I think about how this all went wrong, and how this wasn't what I thought it would be. I thought everything would be so perfect the moment I found the one. But our first time together is a disaster. Is this how everything will be for us? When we get to the hospital, the doctor gives Dean some Valium to relax him. It ends up taking three shots to get his cock to finally soften. And I don't know if I should feel good about how turned on I made him, or embarrassed that we had to stay that way while they keep giving him more and more Valium. He ends up so relaxed, he sounds almost drunk. He starts telling everyone he's going to marry me and that I'm his one true love. It would be sweet if I wasn't still so embarrassed. Once we're disconnected, the nurse takes me into the next room where they remove my IUD to be safe. He's going to be okay? I ask the older nurse who's been at my side since we got here. He'll be fine once the drugs wear off. She shakes her head with a smile. I'm sure everyone is laughing about it, and maybe one day I might too. But that day isn't today. You're good to go. Thanks, I say. The nurse leaves and I put my clothes on. I can still hear Dean next door talking about how he's going to be the best husband and my insides melt. 
but an ache starts to form between my thighs, and I need a long bath and some Advil. I know I shouldn't just leave the hospital, but I can't stay. I call for a ride and sneak out like a coward. I can't face him. Not now and maybe not ever. It isn't until after a long soak in the tub when I replay what happened that I question if I've made a terrible mistake. But if Dean really wants me, he'll find me. Chapter 4 Dean Stealing medical records is a crime, but I was a desperate man. The worst part was the only thing I got to see before the nurse caught me and threatened to call the cops was her medical insurance card. I didn't have time to memorize it, but what I did see was where she worked. One small hint, that's all I needed. But that still wasn't enough. I showed up at the dance studio on the card and went inside. Someone at the front desk told me she was working, but when they went to check, they said she was gone. I raced outside to find her, but only saw a car with a blonde driver racing away into the distance. I drove around for hours, and when I went back to the studio, they were closed. I was at a loss on what to do and where to find her. Then Hank called me and said he needed a wingman to go with him to a wedding, and I had no other solution. After we talked, we realized we'd both been after these women who crashed the wedding together. The only logical solution was to crash another one to find them. I was grasping here, but I'd do whatever I could. I wasn't waiting for the dance studio to open back up if I could find her before then. Hank tells me he's going to check over by the wedding cake for his woman, and I go with my gut and walk toward the dance floor. When I found her the first time, she was headed for the DJ booth. Maybe luck is still on my side. I spot Hank in the distance and see him lock eyes on a woman. I know that he's found her by the way his stance changes. Holy fuck, could this have actually worked? I turn to see the crowded dance floor. The music is thumping, there's a sea of people. And I wonder for a second, who the hell is this many friends and family? My irritation is beginning to rise just when a group of people part in the crowd. And there she is. Her eyes are closed and her hips are moving to the music. There are people packed in, but she isn't paying them any attention. She's listening to the beat and her body is responding to it. My feet carry me forward without my permission, but I have to go to her. The sight of her here and in front of me all over again is fate screaming at us that this is meant to be. I knew the first time we met that she was the one, but this is the goddamn universe telling us not to fuck with the gift it's given us. Without a word, I move in behind her and slide in close. Her warm curves mold to me perfectly just before she tenses. Shh, it's me. I say against her neck before I kiss the hollow just below her ear. Dean? The one word is filled with shock, and I think maybe a hint of excitement. How did you find me? I have no damn clue. I answer honestly as I move to the music. After just a second of hesitation, she begins to move with me, and my arms wrap around her waist. The pull that was there before is even stronger now. And as she leans her back to my front, I know that I'm never letting her get away again. You ran from me. It's a statement of fact. I know. Her words are soft as she looks back at me. You're not doing that ever again. My grip on her hips tightens and I watch as her eyes close slightly. Her lips part, and her tongue darts out to wet them as she presses her ass into my hard cock. I know. You're mine, and I'm yours. 
and if finding you here tonight wasn't enough of a sign, let me make it perfectly clear. I spin her around in my arms and stare at her for a second before I kneel down and take the ring out of my pocket. The one I bought as soon as I got out of the hospital and was on my way to hunting her down. She gasps, and the crowd begins to cheer as I take her hand and slip the ring on it. Forever, I say as she nods, putting her hand over her mouth as the tears begin to form. Say it, sassy pants. I want to hear the words. She laughs, rolling her eyes, and she wipes away a tear. Forever. The crowd around us on the dance floor cheers as I stand up and pull her into my arms. I swing her around as the DJ plays Celebration. We don't know any of these people, but the wedding must be open bar because they're all hugging us and high-fiving each other. It's a complete scene. But I've only got eyes for my Nikki as I press my lips to hers. When I feel her tongue touch mine, I know it's time to get the fuck out of here. The music keeps on going as I carry her off the dance floor and out of the ballroom. Where are you taking me? She says, trailing her lips down my neck and I groan. Here. I try the door of a nearby utility closet and it opens. Oh God, not again. She says but makes no move to stop me as I kick the door closed and press her against it. I'm pushing up her dress and unfastening my pants as I give her a cocky smile. Don't worry, there's nothing in there to try and stop me. She widens her eyes for a second as if realizing we're about to have unprotected sex. Let's see if you can make me a fiancé and a daddy all in one night. She gasps as I thrust into her warm, wet heat all the way to my balls. Harder, Dean. Anything you ask for, it's yours. I move faster and deeper into her as I grab her ass and squeeze it. I bury my face in her neck as she clings to me, and we are once again desperate for one another. I can't imagine a moment in my life when I won't want her just like this every time I look at her and I plan on spending the rest of my life doing it. With one look, she was my everything and all that I wished for. I'd be a fool to let her slip away, and I won't let that happen again. I pin her hand to the door and look over to see the five-carat diamond on her finger sparkling in the light. Is it big enough for you? She moans and spreads her legs wider as my cock ring rubs her G-spot. A smile pulls at the corner of my mouth when she cries out and climaxes on my dick. My turn, sassy pants. Then we're taking this home. I want to lay you out on a bed and feast on you for days. I love you, she says as I thrust inside and begin to come. I love you too, I manage to say as everything I have pours into her. My soul connects with hers, and I hold her tight while my release bonds us in ways that I never thought possible. As I come down from my high, I kiss her lips gently and take my time. I don't want to leave her warmth, but I wasn't kidding when I said I was going to feast on her for days. I've got a stocked pantry and a stack of to-go menus. I'm going to get to know every single inch of her body for the rest of our lives. I'm hungry, I say as I bite her bottom lip. And you're sweet enough to eat. Epilogue Nikki Five years later Nikki I smile, even with a cock in my mouth. I can't help myself. He said my name in warning but I only suck him harder. I've been given strict orders that I'm not to suck him until he comes in my mouth. It's too fun not to try. Dean grips a handful of my hair and pulls me back. His cock slips from my mouth. Sweetheart, 
he tries again, a pleading look in his face. Our three girls are with Sugar and Hank tonight. Dean had plans to put another baby inside of me. I was down, but first he took me to dinner and then out dancing. Our dancing always ends this way. Us both going at each other like it's our first time all over again. The magic is still alive in us. I know it always will be. Dean has taught me that not everything in life has to be planned or run along a certain guideline. We can make up the rules as we go, as long as we have fun while we do it and we always do it together. He's right. Life is more fun that way. Only Dean can make me laugh like no other. We compliment each other. We really are a perfect match and I couldn't be happier. Now, when I think about our first night together, it makes me laugh. What? I fake innocence, batting my eyelashes up at my husband. He bends down to pick me up and tosses me onto the bed. I let out a laugh. The dress I have on rides all the way up. My panties have been gone since we got into the car to get back home. I took them off to play with myself while Dean drove. I really can't help myself when it comes to this man. I enjoy being chased by him, and he's always more than willing to chase me down. Then comes the best part. Getting into trouble. Keep them spread, dirty girl. He points between my legs. If you want to play, we're going to play. My nipples tighten under my dress. They ache for attention as badly as the rest of me. I keep my legs spread for him. He walks over to his side of the bed and opens his nightstand drawer. He pulls out an egg-looking thing and a small remote. What's that? I ask. My breath comes out with a hitch. Dean is always doing something different in bed. I find I'll let him do anything to me. The man knows how to make me come. Hell, sometimes I can't stop coming. I'm a hair trigger when it comes to him. He comes down on the bed over me, his hand going between my legs. My hips rise off the bed when his thumb brushes my clit. Knew I wouldn't need lube. You're always so fucking wet and ready for whatever I want to do to you. Yes, I agree with a whimper as he starts to push something inside of me. Do it to me. His mouth comes down on mine as he turns on the thing he put inside of me, pushing it all the way into me. I moan when the vibration goes through my whole body. Dean! I shout when he pulls his mouth from mine. Only getting started. He moves down my body, pushing my dress farther up as his mouth locks onto my clit. I come. It's hard and fast, and I have no control over it. As fast as the last one hit, another falls onto me. Dean, I can't. Turn it off. I whimper. It's all too much. He lifts his mouth from mine. His eyes widen, and I wiggle. The vibration makes another orgasm push forward. How can I be coming again so quickly? It feels so good, it almost hurts. The sensations are too much and too close together. One orgasm bleeds into another. It's not shutting off. He tosses the remote to the side. He pushes a finger into me, and I feel him give a tug. The egg vibrator moves some, and I come again. My hips rise off the bed. When the wave of pleasure fades... Dean's eyes are bigger than before. In his hand is a string. Get it out, I grit my teeth. It broke, he says, looking at the string thing in his hand. You pull it out with this, he waves the string. Your tight pussy wouldn't let it go, so the string broke. I want to yell at him. I know it's not his fault. I don't know if I want to laugh or cry, but I know what I do. I fucking come again. Fucking hell, 
You're so goddamn hot, Dean says. He pushes off the bed, riding his pants, and putting his very hard cock away. What are you doing? Get this thing out of me, I demand. Why is he getting dressed? Once he gets this out, we're still having sex. Dean shakes his head. I think we know how this goes. He looks apologetic, but I have no idea what he's talking about. At least this time we don't have to call Hank. I groan, throwing my hands over my face as my husband picks me up from the bed. I bury my face in his neck. This time, I bite his neck as I come again. Dean groans, and I wonder if he came too. I kiss the spot I bit. Sorry. Liar. He laughs as he puts me into the car. I can't help but laugh with him. Love you, he tells me. I let out a long sigh. I love you too, I tell him, because I do. I also know I'll be laughing about this later. We get ourselves in all kinds of sexual situations. This has been Sweet Enough to Eat by Alexa Riley. Read for you by El Sonali. Welcome back. Hi. Make sure you guys are in the Remy Romance group. It's in the short links above. I'll make sure it's in the show notes this week as well. And if you're looking for new reads, we have the new release post. It's live every Wednesday. You guys can cruise through. And it separates things out for you for Kindle Unlimited. It's so nice. I don't know how you do it. It's so pretty. Because I'm like, oh, if I want a new audio, I just scroll on down. There it is. <laughs> yeah, I even do audio. Because a lot of people don't do audio books. So I look up yeah. the new audio books that just mm-hmm. came out. Yeah. It and that's takes, awesome. It takes me like an hour and a half. But it's like busy work like i'm watching tv Mm -hmm. and doing it yeah it's not hard but it's just Mm -hmm. so everybody go click on my list god damn it click on it and make it worth it for her um next week we have heavy equipment by sky warren this is one that i think was in season one and it is filthy it's It's so fucking filthy it's like this construction worker sees this girl and he's just like that's it <laughs> i'm gonna take her i don't know just like a grunt sound sounded in my head oh my so god like, yes like it's grunt. like i think it's like i don't know if they consider it like dubious consent or whatever it is oh, it's, yeah. it's definitely like a little forced submission that's happening but god damn it's hot oh. so that's what that's what we've got next week is heavy equipment by sky warren we're replaying an old favorite and then if you want to know when the next new one is, that is going to be the week after that. We have a brand new one by Ember Flint that's called To Be My Hard-Headed Wife, which I'm so excited about. I love the title of this one. It's ridiculous. So People are nailing titles like I know, right? <laughs> I was like, man, people. I just told people to go for it this, this season. I was like, I don't give a shit. Go, whatever the fuck you want. And people just went for it. I love it. It's so great. All right. Well, tell them what to do. Fuck your day up. Make today your bitch. Don't be a dick. Bye, guys. Bye. Read me romance.